Welcome to Markets Now. I'm Michelle Rook with John Heinberg with Total Farm Marketing. I'm mostly lower day and grain and livestock futures, except for the cattle market. And John, kind of the setback overall in the grains, especially corn and soybeans. Did we just kind of run up into some chart resistance and get a little profit taking or what? Yeah, I think that was one of the bigger things that came into play, especially in the corn market. 480 is just a bit of a ceiling. We can't seem to get through that area on the December contract. And we ran up to it on Tuesday, ran up to it again here Wednesday, and failed on that, that point. Just turns the path of least resistance lower, and then the price action just kind of continued to tumble. And same thing on the soybean side, $14. We haven't tested that for a while. And that January bean contract came within a couple pennies. And then you saw the sellers probably step in, obviously, maybe some farmers selling. You know, that's just a good number uh, for, for us to trigger a little bit on the selling front. Throw in there, we do see some a little bit more possible moisture coming into the Brazilian crop uh, maybe next week or over the weekend. So maybe just a little bit of risk off mentality in that soybean market. You know, so after a you know, solid dollar plus rally, it was just a convenient time maybe for this market to take a little bit of a pause. Wouldn't shock me that we see some further drift back, especially if those rains materialize. But still, the longer term picture looks like it's going to continue to be a difficult growing season. And that could keep this market supported well into past the Thanksgiving Day holiday. And if the models do not confirm over the weekend on that South American forecast, is it possible we'll be able to get above that $14 mark in January beans? Yeah, I think it's very possible. Again, that weather premium will come right back in. The momentum is still pointing that way. You know, it's still an upward trending chart. I mean, we just kind of got to the top of the channel a little bit with the trade on Thursday. Uh, so again, we'll have to just kind of watch how that comes in, comes into play um, as we move forward. And you mentioned hedge pressure and even on the corn side of things, you know, you're hearing just like I am, there's a lot of producers that got better than expected yields, at least on corn. So that is kind of a headwind here, isn't it? I think very much so. You know, over the last couple of weeks, it was just amazing the number of phone calls I talked to producers and how they were just kind of baffled by the amount of corn that came at them and what do we do with these extra bushels. You know, obviously they kept sales light because of the, the weather, not making sure they had the crop. You know, in that regard, now we got to figure out what to do. And again, the market isn't exactly jumping up and down about you storing bushels and we got carry in the market. We got demand concerns. You know, those things are coming into play. There's a lot of risk of putting it in the bin and, and holding on to it. So we're seeing some producers, you know, taking a look at all the variables like interest rates and time and things of that nature. And they're just making the decision to move the bushels out now. And I think, again, that pressure is some of the reason we're seeing the core market really struggle these last couple of weeks. Yeah, no doubt. Plus that 2-2 two -two carryover, or close to 2-2 two -two anyways. Uh, Nopa Crush was out today as well. A record for the month, a record for any month, actually. But the market kind of faded it. Had we already kind of traded it, you think? The number was well anticipated, even as strong as it was, you know, for that for that time frame. You know, so I think the market, again, it wasn't any new news. You know, we knew it was going to be big and it came through. You know, I think we still kind of watch. So even oil stocks continue to run light. You know, that's some of the demand that we see from the biodiesel side. Plus, just some of the crush, you know, the oil capacity coming out is not as strong maybe as we thought it would be in that regard. Maybe that's tied a little bit to some of the drier weather this year. But at the same time, that could be one of those areas you look at that soybean oil market. We're starting to see some climb after a very difficult run. Maybe this is that window where soybean meals overpriced, soybean oil is undervalued, and we start seeing that spread work a little bit the other way. Uh, which, you know, soybean oil has helped drive this market forward. Biggest thing is, regardless, crush margins are good. And in general, that's still going to keep crushers active in the soy domestic market just to make sure they're securing supplies. Unlike corn with that bigger carryout, corn beans are thin, even at 245. You know, there's not a lot of wiggle room if all of a sudden things start to fall apart here again, maybe with production next year. Yeah. It also felt like the grains maybe got cut up in some of the money flow with the macro markets. Was that part of it, too? I think that was a little bit of it today. You saw a really strong move in the equity markets yesterday. We saw some follow through today, kind of tied to that inflation data, you know, that came out. That was a little bit more friendly than anticipated. So maybe we saw some money moving back to the equity markets. You know, if inflation is not there, that the anti-inflation play is selling certain commodities and grains kind of fall into that group. You know, grains as well as crude oil was weak on the week today as well. So, you know, so that might have been a little piece of it today. It just kind of felt like it was a very soft day right from the get go. Yeah. We just really couldn't seem to get a whole lot of bid in the grain market. 
We popped on the overnight highs and then the sellers just kind of rolled this thing down most of the day. Was encouraging though, see at least a little bit of money flow kick back into the beans right at the close, even though we still finished in the negative. Yeah. Wheat market though, lower again. How much farther do you think the shorts are going to push this thing? You know, right now with that break today, it was really disappointing to see that in the Chicago wheat market. You know, again, the demand concerns just continue the way. We're looking at some of the lowest export shipments we've seen in years and just showing how uncompetitive we are on the global scale. We got a nice double bottom low back in October with today's break. It feels like maybe that could be an area we push to if we continue to see some more downside in the selling. And the cattle market, third day up. So are we just correcting our oversold status, John, or are we building on something more in terms of a recovery, especially with what we're seeing in some of the macroeconomic markets? You know, this market was heavily oversold with that aggressive selling spree that we saw over the last few weeks here, taking the market off those highs. You know, again, typically when cattle markets, hog markets, or you know, any of the markets, we overdo it one way or another. In this case, we overdid it to the downside. So we're due for some price recovery. I do think the jump in the stock market or the equity markets last couple of days helped bring some money in. That inflation data was very important. You know, if inflation cools, that means the consumer spender has more spending dollars that could they possibly could step into the beef side of it again and support the beef retails. You know, then the other thing too, again, even though we got cattle on feed this week and we expect numbers to be a little bit heavy, you know, we're still looking at cattle pick numbers being tight going forward. Bloomberg actually put out an article today basically saying that cattle supplies are going to stay tight well into 2025. You know, some of that can just trigger the retail investor, or the, al al the algo trader to step into a market that's, you know, heavily sold off its highs. Yeah, but now that we've had this strength, is it... Um... Is it a case where if we get a bearish cattle and feed report, if that placement number confirms at 106, that the funds may head for the door again? You know, that'll be a definite concern going forward. Uh, I mean, if we come in with a heavy number again on this one's cattle and feed report, you know, right now the number's out there. I think the number's getting kind of figured in as long as it's nothing excessive beyond, you know, 107 or something of that nature. Maybe we got some of the pricing in. But we'll to see the trend going into the report, if we're strong again on Thursday and early Friday, then we could set ourselves up for some pullback. If we flatten out here, then I think we're kind of setting ourselves up for a pretty you know, minimal reaction unless numbers are extreme. You know, the biggest thing still going forward is going to be the cash market and the demand. You know, we saw that retail price tumble back here below 300 on choice carcasses. A nice pop at midday today. And that probably helped out those live prices. And now we know to see what cash comes together this week. Yeah, there's been very little cash reported. Uh, hog set back, profit taking, or are we reestablishing cattle hog spreads? You know, that hog market looks tired to me. We had a couple of run out to the 100 day moving average on that December contract. We failed at both of those. You know, now we got a little bit of a round top here. I don't like some of the fundamentals, carcasses, sub 90. You know, even though the index is trading above December, we could close that gap. But just the cash trade trend is not strong right now. Kind of feels like we could be at a spot if we don't get some friendly news. Last week, we had great export sales for hogs and 45,000 tons and, and China picking up 13,000. That helped us out a little bit. You know, that this market could set itself up for a bit of a drift back here again in this window. All right. We'll see. Thanks so much for joining us. Uh, John Heinberg with Total Farm Marketing. That is Markets Now.